my paint by number peeps. This is Melanie from Melanie B's Creative Studio and today we're going to do some paint mixing. So the reason we're doing some paint mixing is because you're going to run across some transparent paints in your kits no matter what. There's at least one every single time. What that is, is it is see-through. So you can see I have painted this color number 14 which looks like a beautiful vibrant color but when I put it on this black background you can barely see it. It's because it's so see-through that it is showing the color through it. So what we want to try to do is come up with a way to replace our number 14 or to make it work better. There's a couple of options that you can do before you ever mix paints but I've learned that mixing paint seems to help me move along um, with my painting a little more efficiently. And, and that's what I've started doing more often. So let's talk about what your first options are before we ever get to the paint mixing. Option number one is using a white Sharpie like this one. It is a paint pen and it is a water-based paint pen. So it is extremely important that you use a water-based and not an oil-based Sharpie. Now, the reason that that's important is that oil-based will leave an oily surface. So the acrylic paint does not want to play well with it. It just kind of gets slick over the top. So the reason we want to use this kind is because this is actually an acrylic paint. It's very thin, but it, it is a, it's a paint, just like the paint you're using. So it tends to work better. Now here you can see I've already swatched a little bit of this paint pen and actually dripped a little bit by accident. You do have to be careful with it if you shake it up, not to hold it over your canvas, um, but to make sure you're testing it on another section of your canvas before you actually put it down. But these are dry now. And, um, and so that is the first thing. So basically what you would be able to do is you color your Sharpie over the number and allow it to dry. And then you would come back after it's dried with your number 14, make sure my brush is clean. And I'm just gonna put a little bit over the top. And you can see, you can still kind of see through that 14, but we can see it. Where here we cannot see it. So the white gives it a background that covers the number and it gives it a little bit better coverage. It is still a transparent color, but it does help. Now here I had used the Arteza white paint out of my 60 piece set, which is the one I'm gonna talk about most today. But I'm gonna just show you, I've already done a swatch of just white acrylic paint because this is your option too. You can use paint like this and just brush on over your number. And then once it dries, it's the same concept as the Sharpie. You're gonna take a little bit of your paint and you'll be able to cover it and it's gonna be more opaque than it was before. All right, so that's option two. Option number three is going to be to add white to number 14. I'm gonna do that here on this little paint palette. So I'm gonna take a little bit of this out and put it on my palette. And then I'm going to take a tiny bit of white and it's gonna be a little harder for me to get a little tiny bit of white here, but I'm just gonna put it on the side. And you can do this directly in your paint pot if you prefer. So I'm gonna take a tiny bit of this white and I'm gonna mix it in. Now what's gonna happen is a couple of things. My paint color is going to get a little lighter than the original. Let's keep the original here so we can see what it looks like. And, but also it's gonna be a little more opaque. You see how that's covering a little better over this black than that one did? So the, the more white we add, the more opaque this color is going to become. But it's also going to lose its depth. So you can see it's not as dark as the original color. So we've lost a little bit of that intensity by adding white to it but we've gained opacity. So here's this one with white added to it. 
So what's gonna happen is, if you decide to add white to your paint, you're gonna lose the intensity, like I said. It's gonna change the tone of your paint. Um, and that's okay if, if it's similar enough to what it, the original color was supposed to be. But in some cases, it'll get too light and you've totally changed the final outcome from what it's supposed to look like. Because this is a beautiful color right here and it's very opaque, but the problem with it is it's not the same color. But that is an option. So that's your option number three. So our final option is gonna to be to mix our own color to make it as close as possible to what we have in number 14. And I know that a lot of people get intimidated by this, but it is not really that difficult if, if you just look at your color and you get an idea of what they use to make that color. So what I mean by that is, so what I can tell right off the bat is that this one, Bordeaux Red, is very similar to our original number 14. It may be a little darker than what we have here, but it's going to be very close to this. But it says here, it tells us that it is a, an opaque color. So that's kind of what we want. We're looking for the same color, but more opaque. So I have these little empty paint pots and this is what I use them for. You could use a palette like this if you'd like to mix it, but then you kind of lose a little bit of your paint when you scoop it out to put it in your pot. So just, just mix in your, in your empty pot if you can. So I'm gonna add a little bit of this Bordeaux Red. I say a little bit. You don't need as much as you think you need. What I wanna do is I'm comparing the two. My Bordeaux Red is darker than my number 14. So we know we're gonna to have to add a little bit of white to it to lighten it up. So anytime you need it to be lighter, you're gonna add white. Anytime you need the color to be darker, you're gonna add a little tiny bit of black. And so I'm just gonna add a little white down in here See if it'll come off without me having to get a tool to do it. I will, we'll just put it on the side, it'll be fine. And now I'm gonna take something to mix my colors up. Now I usually use a stir stick, one of my Chalk Couture stir sticks. But for right now, I'm just gonna use the end of my paintbrush and I'm going to mix the white with that Bordeaux Red and get it as mixed as I can Use whatever you have to mix with. Palette knives are nice. The little stir sticks are great. All right, so let's compare our two colors. Our Bordeaux Red is a little darker still, but it's getting close. So I'm gonna add just a little bit more white. Actually, a pretty good bit of white because I can always deepen it back up, but I'm gonna need a little bit more for my painting anyway. So I'm adding more white. Now you can see it's gonna get real light because of the amount I added, but that's okay because this is a good way for me to explain it. So I'm really getting close. Now a tiny bit more of the Bordeaux Red because I added too much white. I'm gonna put it on this little stick. <laughs> And that way I can, and if I had a little palette knife with me, I would um, do it that way. And then I'm just gonna mix that in. So all you're doing is just using your original one as a reference and making the paints match as much as possible. So look, that is, as, I mean, about as close as you can get. Let's test our paint here next to, I just, oh, the next to our number 14 and see what happens. So let's test it here. I'm gonna try to do a little bit larger swatch for you. I'm gonna test the number 14 and see if we're pretty close. So the reason this one is showing darker is because the black is showing through because it's so transparent. 
and this one isn't showing as much, this one's more opaque. So let's put it on a white surface and compare them there. So this is number 14 that's on my brush. And I've already got a swatch over there, but I'm gonna do it this way. And you notice how it streaks and it, the overlap sh lines show. That's what happens too if you have a thin paint, like a transparent paint, it will leave you those stroke marks. So we don't want that either. Now let's try our one from here and see. So what we're looking for is whether the colors are the same. All right, so here I'm noticing, even after adding a lot of white and a little bit of Bordeaux, it's still a little different tone than what I had originally. So what I can do here to fix this and you guys, you don't have to do a step further. You could leave it just like this. No one will ever know the difference. It is so close right here. But look at the difference in the stroking of the one we mixed versus the one that we got in our kit. It's already just such an improvement and I didn't even add Flow Aid to it yet. But let's say that we really are just adamant about getting this exact color. What I will do is go to my other paints and look and compare them to this original color and decide which one do I need to add to get this to be a little bit more like that. And I feel like this light magenta might do it. And this is y'all, this is how I do this. Like I just guess and then I stick it in there and I mix it up and if it's not right, I add a little bit of this or a little bit of that. And that is what you should do. It should not be something that scares you because y'all, it's just paint. You know, I mean like, okay, what have I lost? I've lost a, dollop of a couple of different paints so you know i'm not out a bunch of money and i'm going to get it as close as i can so i'm going to mix in this little bit of a brighter pink to get our tone where it needs to be make sure my brush is dry i don't want to taint it with any water or anything and let's paint it and see how close we are now, that is pretty doggone close right there. If you still are crazy adamant about making sure it looks like that, the only difference would probably be a little bit more of our magenta. And let's use a little bit from the, just the stick and let's take it out and stick it in there and stir it up. These paints aren't going to drip out of these tubes, but I do like to keep the lid on it tight to make sure it doesn't dry out, you know, the paint inside. Okay, so let's see where we are. Let's go here. And it's just such a great consistency and, oh my gosh, the color. It's very little difference. So let's go with a little white. It doesn't have to take this long, you guys. It really doesn't take long at all. It's just that I'm being very precise about making sure that the final outcome is exactly what we had to begin with. So you do not have to be this OCD about it. I'm only doing this for the video. I would have already stopped probably and left it alone because it's so close. But for those of you who really want it to be exact, I wanna make sure I show you how to do that. Let's go in with this color next to the original. Now keep in mind, this one's always gonna be a little tiny bit lighter because it is transparent, so the white background is showing through. And that's why you're seeing a little bit of difference between these two, but you guys, seriously, um, that is like super close. Now what happens if we add a tiny bit of this rose color? Now this is a, um, it's not as opaque as the rest, but it is, it's still pretty, it's still about a semi-opaque. Um, or you can even take the original color, a scoop of that original color and add it, and it's gonna get you even closer to what you have. So let's do it that way. and see if it changes our opacity at all. We don't want what we've got going on here to be any more transparent because it's perfect the way it is. 
but let's scoop out a little of the original color because I'm not gonna be using that color and mix it in and see what we get. I feel like a little chemist. I made a B in chemistry. I don't know, remember a dang thing, but I do, I did make a B. <laughs> and this will be our final attempt. Let's put it above it. Make a little cross. Let me, let me get a little more. It's so creamy. Now look. I think that's pretty much perfection. Maybe let's try it on our black background between that one and that one and see where we are. And that will be the end of our test. And I hope this has helped. Um, I know there's a lot of other colors that we could work with. Yellows. I'm gonna show you what to do with yellow and then we'll, we'll be done. So let's take our original. We've already got some swatches of our original, but let's go ahead and just so we can compare them side by side. And I'm putting a big blop. Boy, that just is so transparent. The texture's good, but the transparency is, ugh. Now you're gonna notice this number 14 is gonna be darker when it dries than what we have here because it is showing the black through it, just like it was showing the white through it on that other palette and making it lighter. And let's get a little blop. These Arteza paints are 40 bucks for 60. You cannot go wrong with that. You can even find them on sale. Um, I do, I am an affiliate for Arteza, only because once I tried them, I was like, heck yeah. I didn't become an affiliate and then try them, if that makes sense. I loved them, so I thought, oh yeah, that's, I would definitely be able to recommend this company with, with um, complete trust. That's the original, and that's the one we've mixed. The color is so similar, and then you can look here. This is the, sorry, this is the original, and that's the one we've mixed. So you can see how much darker it looks here than here, how much lighter it looks here than here. If this one was more opaque, you would have the same color and the final result. All right, um, so what I do is I'm gonna cut this off, and I'm gonna la label it Canvas by Number, number 14. And that way, if I leave this thing laying around, I know it goes with my canvas by number painting and it's number 14. So I just put it in my container with my other paints and that's what I do to mix paints. So we're gonna move to, and I know this video is gonna be long and I apologize you guys, but I feel like there's so much to paint mixing that needs to be explained. So you guys know the tr yellows are the trickiest of them all. I mean, like they are the absolute worst. They never cover, they, I mean, rarely. Now, I will say that my Anna Banana new paintings that I just got and I just did a review on um, are just covering beautifully for yellow, but I'm still able to see the number through it. So even though they're fantastic, it's still difficult because I can still see the number. So at some point I have to fix those up a little bit. I'm not gonna get as much opacity even with these paints as I am with um, other colors because yellow is just doesn't have as much pigment by nature. So I'm using this old paint set from an old kit that I had. And let's do a little test here. And look how green it looks because it is so transparent. Now I'm gonna take that same one and we're gonna go to our white palette here. I really should have used a white cardstock because this plastic is a little different. Okay. So you can still see a lot of white plastic through that. And I'm just trying to get it to, it, see I can't even get it smooth, so it's annoying. All right, so set that one there and this one here and you see the difference between the two, the difference when you add white, the difference when you have black. And that kind of is a good explanation, it's a good visual for what happens if you add white paint to it or if you add black paint to it. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna look at this color like we did with the pink and we're going to match it as best we can. So I've got my white, because I know I'm probably gonna use a little white. I've got yellow ochre, which you can see is a more golden tone. 
but you can see there's more gold in this than, let's say, lemon yellow. So you see that? The tone of this yellow is not lemon yellow. It is more of yellow ochre. Or it could even be more of this deep yellow. So I'm gonna pick the one when I'm matching my paints that is the most like what I have in my pot. I'm gonna put this lemon yellow away. I might even need it in a minute. You never know once you start match, uh, mixing them. And then let's get another paint pot. I really don't need this paint mixed because <laughs> I'm never gonna use this again, but um, there might be yellows in the future that I would need. All right, so let's start with deep yellow. Now I'm gonna see right here, this is going to tell me how opaque or transparent this particular paint is. So this paint is about a semi-opaque. Let's see how it compares to the paint we have here. It is about the same. In fact, it's more transparent probably than even that is. But we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna add so, oh God, a lot of this paint, <laughs> I squeezed it a little harder. And because this yellow ochre is more opaque, even though I don't need it for tone, I'm gonna add a little bit of it for opacity. And then I'm gonna add white to offset because it's also opaque. I'm gonna add some of this to offset the yellow ochre. And we're just gonna mix this up and see where we come out. This is literally, you guys, how I do this. Like, I don't give it too much thought as far as being worried. But let's see what we get. Now, if it's too gold because of the yellow ochre, I can add a little bit more of that deep yellow. So yeah, it definitely looks a little bit more yellow ochre. So let's add um, let's add a little white to lighten it. It made it lighter, but it's not the right tone. It still needs more brightness. So we're gonna go back with the deep yellow. I know I'm gonna be able to use this yellow at some point. And add a little of that. And that way we get the tone back to match that one. So we're getting closer. And lastly, I'm gonna add a tiny bit more. Tiny is not, I don't even know why I say tiny. I lie. A little bit more. There's such a subtle difference in the two that I would just use it as it is. But again, we're gonna go for those of you who really want it to be exact. I'll stop for now and test it. All right, so we're gonna compare these two. That one you can't even see anymore. That was the one right out of the tube. Let me get some on it. Let's see. I'm trying to get all that excess paint off there. So it's definitely giving me more opacity because yellow on black is never going to be exactly opaque unless you added a ton of yellow, but then, I mean a ton of white, but then I'm gonna lose my tone. And it's still, this one's still a little darker than that one, but we're gonna try it here. The tone is off a little bit because of the white. The opacity is so much better. I can't stop painting it. I mean, I'm just like, oh, it's so pretty. I just don't like seeing stroke marks. I'm so weird. Okay, but you can see more opacity here than there. So of these colors, let's try to dip in here and add this actual color and see what happens. Gosh, I can't even tell the difference. Are we losing opacity because we added some of that original color or not? I, keep, I got just such a blob on there, there we go. Yellow just is not gonna cover black. But we're improving, that's for sure. 
So this one is the one we've mixed. And that's one we had to begin with. Now let's do it on the white. See where we stand here. Yep, it's pretty. And it did not change the opacity from here to here. It just gave it a little bit more of the same tone. All right, so that's our yellow. Now, I'm not gonna say that this will be able to be used without a little Sharpie underneath. Um, usually it can. Let's, let's try it here. This is actually white paint and that's Sharpie. Let's try it over the Sharpie and see if it, it oh yeah, it's nice and opaque. But there we go. And then this one, this is white acrylic paint. Of course, you're gonna see really solid light. I mean, you're gonna see a lot of stroke marks on a palette like this because it's plastic. Um, that you wouldn't see on your canvas. But anyway, you can see that it's going to definitely brighten it up a lot here, but you can still use it probably without even much white underneath if you had to. Or you can add a lot more white, make it a lot more opaque. The more white we add, the more opaque it's going to become. I'm gonna add a lot because I don't need this color for anything and we're just gonna play. We're experimenting. All right, let's mix this one up and let's see what happens with all this white because again, I'd rather have a little different tone of yellow and more opacity. I don't wanna have to paint under it with white if I don't have to. That's just extra time. Okay, so let's test it with the extra white in it. When I'm stroking over the top on this cardstock, it is definitely not giving me what it would do on a canvas. It's because I like to get the stroke marks out and I work it too much. But you can see the opacity is so much better there than there and a whole lot better than that. So let's try it here and then we're going to be done, you guys. It's so it's in the same family of yellows, but it's given me more opacity. So that's what I would probably use. All right, so let's compare this final one to this 12 see how much difference there is it's lighter the tone is the same it's just a tint of that which i'm okay with i'd rather use this one that's going to give me that coverage than this one that's going to give me that coverage i'd rather have this one than that one all right everyone i hope you guys found this helpful i appreciate you guys as always for watching uh please continue to follow me on facebook at the group and on YouTube by subscribing. And I have Pinterest and I also have Instagram. I do not use Instagram very often. I'm really bad about it for some reason, but I do add to Pinterest and I have some good boards over there. And the link for that is actually in the description in the bottom. So be sure to check that out and go follow me on Pinterest. All right, everyone. I hope you have a wonderful day and you're staying safe and, um, I will see you back soon. I know I've got a lot of things planned for us, so keep watching.